it's like if you know it's going to work, at least give her the option. But if we yeah. don't know, and we're still just testing, and you're going to kill it. I, I can't let that happen. And that that's that's God damn it, bro! I knew we I knew we thought the same. <laughs> I knew we thought the same. Yeah, we're just going to start this shit live. The only time I caught the Holy Ghost when I was in church drinking. Like, they're two dumb dudes. Welcome to the latest episode of Sarah and Chris's Movie Therapy Podcast. Why you look so nervous, bro? Why you look so nervous? Ain't nobody chasing you down. Ain't no red and blue lights behind you. Why you look so nervous? It's a lifestyle, man. Once it happens, you never forget it. But no. <laughs> um, you know why I'm nervous. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I know exactly why you're nervous. But, but, you know, caveat, I might have to interject a little honesty into the episode. Mm-hmm. Okay. All right. So with that being said, welcome to the latest episode of Sarah and Chris's movie therapy podcast, Side B. B. Bitches. <laughs> and we are here. We're, we're, we're at the finale of The Last of Us on Indeed. HBO Max. And, you know, I mean, this has been, it's been our first time trying to do something other than, you know, the movies and stuff like that. And I, and I like this. I like the idea of, you know, approaching something that's got a little more, it's more, more episodic, gives mm-hmm. us, you know, you know, time every week to really catch up with what's going on. How did you feel? How, what was this like for you? Like jumping into like doing a series versus a movie? It was actually pretty cool. Gave you something to look forward to every week, even though we do the movies and everything. But um, also just keeping up with the, um, with the show itself. Yeah. And anticipating the next episode or whatever the case may be. Yeah, because the show itself, it was it was actually very like it, it kept our attention, kept everything yeah. going. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I don't want to get too far into this episode because we do have a little a little matter to deal with right now. And that is what, what was the bit again? <laughs> All right. So so for those <laughs> listening or who haven't listened to episode, what is it, eight, eight other podcasts, uh, at the end of the episode, we made a little bet. And that bet was we were trying to decide how the season finale was going to end. Mm-hmm. Now, Chris, Chris thought that it was going to end on a cliffhanger. Yeah. They were going to, it's just going to cut off. Well, they did kind of, okay. okay. Keep going. Okay, okay, okay. Keep going. Keep going. I, I said, I thought they were going to not find what they were looking for, but they were going to have an idea of where, you know, uh, like a, a heading, they were gonna know where they were gonna need to go next, and that's where they were gonna head. So, like I said, I have to interject a little honesty into this episode because I feel like the ending can go both ways. Yeah, it really can, right? It can. Because, can... go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Go for, it. go for it. No, I'm just saying because it did cut off the way I said it was going to, but I don't think it left you on a cliffhanger. Yeah, in, cause, in cause my they, opinion, because they cut off. You you learn something new, mm. you learn something. Then something happened. They 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 establish where they're gonna go next. You know, but it did have that abrupt ending because that last piece of information that you just got from them. Mm-hmm. You know, it wasn't like a oh, I'm you know I'm, I'm I'm you know I'm on a cliffhanger. I don't know what's gonna happen next. But it kind of is a cliffhanger because now you're like now you're wondering what the dynamic is gonna be mm-hmm. in the next season. So, so what do we do? What do we do? Uh, because okay, what, what, what were the terms of this? What were the terms of this? This, if I remember correctly, I think you had to wear a cutoff shirt and um drink some Jack Daniel. Am I right? I know I had to wear a bandana. Oh, there you go, drink bandana. A glass of Jack Daniels. Okay, and you had to drink a glass of Hennessy. And take the and bandana off. Bandana off. <laughs> so, I think, and this is just me. You, you tell me if I'm being a little too political. No, I'm serious. You're going with this because you're probably thinking the same thing I'm thinking. I think, uh, you know, as far as clothing stuff, I think we can just we can toss that out, not even worry about that. But I think with the drinks, I th- I think we both might have to partake. Yeah, because I didn't buy this jigaboo juice for nothing. God damn it! <laughs> <laughs> and listen. This thing's been sitting here for a while, so I have to I have to touch it somehow. Oh gosh! So yeah, let let's pour up and <sighs> let's delve into this because you know. Are we doing a shot first? I got a glass of ice on this one. I'm, 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 like... I'm just doing a glass of ice. I ain't doing no shot. If I'm gonna drink this thing a, a good amount of this, I'm not doing a shot too. Gotcha. 
Oh, I'm not looking forward to this. <laughs> you, I'm, I've been dreading this all damn day. <laughs> I'm able to drink this shit. Jack, I hate you. I hate your guts. Oh, gosh. Man, I wish we could, I mean, I wish we could just switch mm. cups right now. Mm. Because. So terrible. Oh, my God. Look at that. That's gross. Look at this. It's so, it's so dark and shit. Yeah. I like the dark. I like the smoky. <laughs> Ugh, I, can I like, smell it. Oh, I, I God, like my man. Hennessy like I likes my women. Mm. Bitter. <laughs> oh God. Mm. Oh, okay. So uh, before we mm-hmm. delve into mm-hmm. this, this season finale, look, I got Jack sitting here just looking at me. Like, what the fuck oh, is going goodness. on? Oh, I just smelled it, bro. I just yeah. smelled it. Mm. Oh. Mm. Yeah. Not, not a, mm. I'm looking forward to this. You got? Did you get a chaser? Let's got some water. I, I got. I, I got a little. Can of fit aid just in case. Mm, I, can smell, I can smell it. Mm. All right, cheers, bro. I'm, I'm not shooting it, so I gotta just make it through this to the end before the end of the episode. All right. Cheers, cheers, cheers to the, the season finale. Yes, indeed. Uh, ain't bad on ice. I was literally about to say the same exact thing. <laughs> this actually ain't doing bad on ice. Maybe because I've been taking shots with you this whole time. Oh. I have not like, had the appreciation uh, for Jack. Uh, hmm. mm. This is Jack New York. You are now John. John Daniels. <laughs> John Daniels. Yeah, in a class, uh, a little sophisticated. Uh, you're John Daniels. What movie was that from? Um, Son of a Woman. There you go. I've never uh, seen it. Uh, Al Pacino's character called it John Daniel. Yeah. And, and, and I, think, I think the girl asked him why. And he said, when you know him as long as I have, his name becomes John. It's not Jack anymore. That's you, man. You, I mean, yeah. I'm, you probably have pet names for your bottle. Yeah. This is Pookie Baby. Pookie. This is Bella. This is Louise. <laughs> Actually, they all had girl names, you know. And I had the vodka, tequila, the Jack, you know. They all every bro, every every bottle every bottle Jack is a new woman. That's just yeah, for some reason that just seems right on brand with you. Yeah, man. You know, the vodka was the white girl. The tequila was the Spanish girl. <laughs> Jack was the, the black girl. You know. Oh. Mm. All right. So I mean, sorry. Right. So, season finale. When we when we, when we when we left off, they had just gotten done. Um, you know, dealing with the 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 pastor and that whole that whole group mm-hmm. up in the mountains. Which I remember when I looked it up after. It's the Donner Party. That's okay. who. I felt that episode was. Uh, modeled after because the Donner Party was this group that was migrating out west. They got caught in the Rockies in a snowstorm and they resorted to cannibalism. Mm. And that's you know, so that's what I thought of when I saw this episode. Okay, gotcha. But, but when we when we reestablish ourselves with Joel and Ellie, the dynamic is you know a little different, right? Mm-hmm. Like Ellie is a little she's on the quieter side. Yes. And she's Joel less is asshole. a little what's up? I think she's less she's less asshole <laughs> Yeah, she's on the quieter side, and Joel is a little more, I want to say friendlier. fatherly. Mm. Friendlier. There you go, friendlier. Mm-hmm. Right? What do you think attributed to that that little dynamic change? You ever heard that phrase, a friend in, a friend in need is a friend indeed? Uh, I feel like I've heard it before, but I'm not familiar with it. I mean, I feel like this is one of those situations where no matter how they started off, especially after the last episode, yeah, they actually really needed each other to survive. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. and I think um, that's what brought them closer. Just like how how the saying goes, a friend in need is a friend indeed. You know what I'm saying? But do you think at this moment in the episode, do you do you feel like uh, Ellie was closer to Joel? Because I felt like Joel finally got over that hump of being the 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 protector, mm-hmm. and almost finally became like that father figure yeah because i feel like i feel like ellie came into her her part of it um when they met joe's brother that episode yeah and, when, and joe was gonna leave and she basically cussed him out or whatever yeah. i think i think at that moment she understood her part of the relationship well but then why was she so quiet at the beginning of this episode she was like oh, no, that, and kind of off in her own world well no that's what i'm saying so if you go back to that episode she understood her, her her part of it. Joel still didn't understand his until yeah. the last episode, in my opinion. No, but I'm saying like in the beginning of this episode, you know, um, Ellie's kind of just quiet into her own world, kind of thinking to herself. 
but she just slaughtered the whole dude with a freaking cleaver. Well, and that's what I'm saying. I think, you know, I think at this moment, you know, I think Joel finally fell into his, you know, his part in the, into, in the relationship. He fell, mm-hmm. fell into that fatherly figure thing. I think, I think Ellie finally got, I don't want to say like first world, like, uh, experience, but I think she finally understood like the gravity of the situation. Like, mm. like these, these people are dying because of this thing going on. Mm-hmm. I have whatever's in me might be able to cure it, but as far as I know, it don't work because it didn't work last time I tried to use it on Sam. Yeah. So now you're in this thing of like, yo, is this all for nothing? Mm. That's what I was. Yep. That's what was going. That's what I thought was going through her head. Like, is this is this shit all for nothing? Mm. You know. Yeah. To me, that's a fucking. I mean, if <sighs> imagine thinking that you hold the key to survival, whatever you hold that magic key, but in your head you're like, I just, I just don't know if it's gonna work. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> we talked about this before. I feel like we did. We refer, refer back to Transformers. I think it was Revenge of the Fallen, and how how um Sam obviously same name had to get the the key or the Allspark or whatever, and yep. it turned into pixie dust. Yeah, it's yeah. like it's like just knowing you believe something. I think I think that makes a big difference of whether it's going to work or not. I mean, when it doesn't work, it's that much more devastating. But if you hold into that one little inch that you got, like it's going to work. It has to work. You know what I'm saying? Sometimes like so. that inch. Hmm? Right, go ahead. No, go ahead. I say sometimes that inch that you're holding on to will get you that mile. You know what I mean? Yeah. So you're saying that like maybe she's starting to at least was starting to second guess. You know whether this all this all this running all this going down like trying to find whoever is worth it. Yeah. <clears throat> but um, still finishing the mission. Like yeah. just got it. We got. I got to know for sure. You know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. 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 Like I hope I hope it means something, but I, I'm starting to think it means absolutely nothing. Yeah. You know what was interesting to me is the the story that Joel tells Ellie about how he got the scar on his head. Mm, yeah. Because cause like, you know, she I mean he told her before, you know, somebody shot and they missed. Mm-hmm. It was back on like episode three or some shit like that. Yeah. Somebody shot and they missed. You know, that actually happens a lot in this life. And then you f- find out here that it was him. Yeah. The one that shot and missed. Mm-hmm. Like when you uh, when you reach like I mean trying to tell someone that hey man I tried to kill myself before mm-hmm. shit didn't work and like I just I I was in a I was in a space where I have nothing to live for mm. until now yeah like that's I mean that's a like what is it uh, uh acknowledging that accepting mm-hmm. that accepting the fact that like. You know, you finally feel like you have something that's worth living and fighting for. Mm-hmm. That's a that's a that's a very one is a very deep truth to to accept, and two, that's a hard thing to to tell to someone. You know, no, oh, definitely. I mean, yeah, I guess everybody has their own demons that they fight, whatever the case may be. Yeah. And obviously, Joel's was in the very first episode him losing his daughter. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, do you do you think throughout the series? Uh, Joel was fighting with the idea of like he didn't want to replace the memory of his daughter. I wouldn't say necessarily fighting with replacing her memory. <clears throat> um, because I don't think she was ever gonna go anywhere. I just think he fought with the idea of um having to relive it. Yeah. With taking care of Ellie, somebody that was roughly his daughter's age, I'm guessing. Yeah. And him thinking he was a, a failure protecting people, so I don't want this responsibility because I suck at it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So yeah, I don't know. So, part of me yeah. also think. Part of me also thinks that like he might have been fighting with the idea of like I don't, I don't want anyone to mean more to me than my daughter. Mm. And if I, if I accept this girl's life as something that I have to take care of, mm-hmm. and it's it's possibly like it's possibly pushing my daughter aside or the thought of my daughter aside for someone else, mm. you know? And I, I, sometimes I think about that. I think about the idea that like, you know, uh, replacing the, the important people in your life, 
Mm. Sometimes, sometimes when you move from one uh, one space to another, you feel like you're replacing the people who were once important in your life. When in mm. actuality, you're kind of just you're just making room for more people who were important in your life, and you're pretty much mentalizing <clears throat> like this person was important as well. It's yeah. just this is the person that's in front of me right now that I got to take care of. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. I mean, as far as Ellie goes, like I was just, I don't know. I could, I don't know how I feel like if I was in that moment, just walking. Cause part of me would feel like I need to get this done. I need to know for sure. But another part of me might feel like it's endless. Like, am I destined to just keep walking this earth? Like the fucking incredible Hulk? I mean, well, if you go into her backstory, which I wonder if she even knows how she got the virus, because maybe I'm wrong, but throughout the whole series, I believe that we were told as viewers she had got bit and it didn't affect her. No, they I, throughout the series we were told, yeah, 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 she got bit, and for some reason she was immune to it. She had no idea. She had no idea why she was immune to this, to this virus. Mm, okay. And we had no idea either, until this episode. Indeed, but see, and, but that's what I'm saying. But I thought the way they expressed it was she cut, was she got bit. Versus in the episode, we showed that she was actually in her mother's womb when her mom got bit. Yeah, so well, it was I, like she was born with it. You know, what yeah. I'm saying? She, I think, she, yeah, she was. I think she was born with. Uh, well, okay. So before we get into that, so like, yeah, when she got bit, she she doesn't understand why this stuff doesn't affect her. Mm. And then as we're watching it, we see that you know, again, her mom was running; she was pregnant, and she got bit, and then she got bit while she was in the womb, and well, while Ella was in the womb, and that's why. You know, whatever whatever enzymes come from the the, the mushrooms that go into the body, you know, mm-hmm. were probably present when she was born, and yeah. you know, that's why they were there. Um, what was really interesting to me was how her mother chose to tell Marlene that she cut her loose before she got big. Mm. Yeah, because I mean, there's a callback at the end of the of the episode but in this instance i mean we'll go into it but like no i just had a whole brain for what i just said but keep going i gotta, I gotta backtrack for a minute well because like in here like in this in this instance she tells marlene like hey yeah she got bit i got bit after i cut her out like she didn't get bit like she essentially she lied to her in order to protect ellie and then fast forward to the end of the episode when joel tells her tells ellie like you know about the um about the virus or whatever is in it and you know he's saying that like the fireflies said they can't help her let's just go back to this town whatever and mm-hmm. that, like they have there's more people like you so we can you know they don't need you exactly uh, specifically and ellie is telling him, he goes tell me you're telling this you know tell me that you're telling me the truth about the fireflies mm-hmm. and he lies to her yeah because He's, he's protecting her yeah and that's like that parental figure like i don't know i just thought that was a dope thing like you're you're essentially putting yourself in danger by lying to protect this girl like she's had to happen twice in her life yeah you know but i don't think she really understands like what kind of sacrifice that is like what that what that actually means about her that these mm. other people are you know sacrificing their life and lying about this situation in order to protect her yeah because obviously we find out they basically want to kill her yeah you know what i'm saying yeah so essentially they said that about whatever the enzymes whatever the the mushrooms do in the brain yeah. she's got something in her that stops yeah. it but it's in, it's in the brain yeah so in order for them to harvest it you know they have to essentially kill her yeah how do you react in this situation because we saw how joel react he was <clears throat> he wasn't having any of it Nah, I mean, and that's the whole thing about um, what you said about reliving his daughter, you know what I'm saying? Like, I like I can't let this girl die knowing that we don't even know if it's going to work. Because I think he starts to understand, too. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, if you know it's going to work, at least give her the option. But if we yeah. don't know, we're still just testing and you're going to kill her? I, I can't let that happen. And that that's, that's, God damn it, bruh. I knew we I knew we thought the same. <laughs> I knew we thought the same. Oh man. <clears throat> that's exactly what I said. I said, you know, uh, I was getting into a discussion with a friend about it, and they were saying that, like, you know, it's crazy that he's putting the the um 
the safety of the entire world, you know, in jeopardy because, you know, he saved Ellie. Mm -hmm. And to me, it was like, well, it's not like we don't know if it's going to work. No one knows if it's going to work. So he's looking at it like, I don't know if it's going to work, but whether it does or it doesn't, Ellie loses her life. So if she's going to lose her life, at least let's make sure it fucking works. Yeah. Before she has to lose her life. Yeah. Because I mean, what I mean, the thing is, what happens if she gets killed and it doesn't work? Mm-hmm. Now, you, now you're you're out. This one, you know, element or this one person who can might possibly have the cure, to save everyone. Yep. <clears throat> you pull you that lit- trigger. Did you pull you that lit- trigger? <clears throat> Knowing everything they went through in the whole journey from front to back. Um. Yeah. Uh, if you if, uh, if you if you've been standing on. What you've been standing on since you've been standing on it, whatever it may be, you know what I'm saying? Um, and it comes down to that that moment. It's like, okay, nah, I'm I'm tired of talking. This ain't this ain't working no more. You know what I'm saying? I, I take matters into my own hands. All right, let me pose this scenario. Just okay. because it's probably, probably be a little more familiar to you because I'm cu- I'm very curious right now. All right, so say you were on the battlefield, right? Mm-hmm. I still can't and... drink this shit. <laughs> it hurts yeah, every time. I'm going in. I'm going in. No, I, I know what that does. You can be ready to fuck later. Trust me. <laughs> I got work to do. I can't be doing nothing now. Oh, okay, <laughs> that is work. Get, get the work done. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, I right, say you're on the battlefield, right? Mm-hmm. And on the one hand, okay, now you're in a firefight. And on the one hand, you got this one soldier who has saved your life mm-hmm. at, at one point, okay? But now you have your whole battalion who's under fire. Mm-hmm. And in order to save that entire battalion, that one soldier that saved your life might have to lose their life. Mm. Do you save your battalion or do you save that person that saved you? Um. That's a hard, that's a hard question because to, to me this is the I said it's the same exact scenario because this is the girl that saved Joel's life. Mm-hmm. This is you know, it's it's like who, what's more important, the people that I don't know when this thing might not work, or mm-hmm. this one person who I know has a cure and has physically brought me back to life. Yeah, um, that's a really really hard question when you put it into into war format. That's a really, really hard question because there's different ways to think about it, especially the way I think. Okay, so not necessarily. Okay, so okay, instead of putting you on the spot and like saying pick one or the other, what's mm-hmm. going through your mind when you have to make a decision like that? That's I'm um, just I'm just very curious because that's a that's like a once in a lifetime scenario that anyone would ever have to face. Yeah, it's um, <clears throat> it's like. I'm putting myself in that position and it's like you almost got only seconds to make a decision and you know whatever decision you make is going to be crucial you know what i'm saying so it's what i would tell myself is of course you want to save that person but if you're but if you look at the bigger picture of it all maybe that person saved you because you're supposed to save everybody else you know what i'm saying and i like that i like that and it's 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 a it's a it's a it's a hard pill to swallow because like like you said you gotta lose that person that brought you back to life, but maybe their purpose was to bring you back to life so you can bring them back to life. Yeah, <laughs> you know what I'm saying. But you gotta lose that in order to do that because if you yeah. save that, then it's 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 either way. You know, it sucks. It sucks either yeah. way. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, and even in the show, it's that the question is posed like, would Ellie have even wanted him to save her? Mm. Because she, I think. She was under, you know, the assumption, not the assumption, but like she was under the mindset of, you know, this can't, I can't, this can't be for nothing. All this death, all this running and doing all this stuff can't be for nothing. So mm-hmm. I think she's under the impression that like, you know, whatever it takes, even if I have to lose my life, like whatever it takes to save the world, like I'm down for. Yeah. But I think, I, mean- I think where, I think in this instance where it hits the gray area is, you know, does it actually save the world? Okay, so let me ask you a question. Let's just say this is you in that position. Yep. And let's just say you know that what you have is going to save the world. Are you willing to do it? 
like you're gonna die in the process of it, but you know, but you know for a fact it's gonna cure everybody. Oh, I'm gonna die. Like yeah, like let's just say that this is this is you in the scenario, and you know that what you have in your body is gonna cure the world, but you're gonna die in the process of letting them take it from you. Are you willing to do that? Well, okay. So I think this is I, I don't think this is the 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 right question to be asking me. Just got because just because fuck me, fuck me. I can give a shit about me. Save the people. That's I mean so to me that's an easy to me that's an easy easy uh, a question you know a question and answer. The okay. bigger question is if it's someone I love who saved me, what am I doing in that situation? Am I am I saving her, or am I saving all these people that I don't know? Mm-hmm. If, if I know that the cure works, that's to me that's a hard one. And I think I think in that instance, in that instance, I who whoever it is. That's, you know, my significant other or my loved one that's in that position. I leave it up to them. I'm like, whatever you want to do, I'm here to make sure that happens. And if that means losing you in order to save the world, if that's, if that's your true will, then so be it. That's what, that's what's going to have to happen. And I'm going to have to, I mean, it's going to suck for me, but I'm going to have to live with the idea that you went out doing what you wanted to do. Mm. Because the last thing you want is for someone to keep on living, knowing they could have made a difference and you stopped them from making a difference. Right. Yeah. Mm. I mean, it sucks. It really yeah. sucks. But like, yeah, you know, but in this, I mean, in this, in the instance of the TV show, it's harder because we don't know if the cure is going to work. Yeah. Right. And that's what makes it tough because uh, it's like, I don't fault Ellie for wanting to save the world and sacrificing herself to try to save the world. Especially Go ahead. Like, especially if everything they went through, like, look, I ain't traveling from Boston to fucking Wyoming mm-hmm. for nothing. I don't know. Eating you know what what I'm every day. I mean, for real. Fucking fighting off, you know, creepy pastors and shit. For real. You know what I'm saying? Eating yeah. fucking people. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I, I, I didn't do all that just to have it be for nothing. Yeah. At the same time, like, I can't fault Joel. It's like, I don't know if this shit's going to work. Mm-hmm. Like, don't fucking kill her if I don't know it's if we don't know it's gonna work. Yeah, you know. All right, hub. So okay, before we even get into this, mm-hmm. here's a question I had, and maybe you can answer this for me. Okay. I thought Marlene died in the first episode. I know she was shot, but I was surprised about that too. I didn't. I I don't. I don't remember her dying though. But she was shot. She was hit. So I saw her pop up, and I was like, "Is she with Fedra? Is she with the other side?" Mm. I didn't know what was going on. I just saw her. I was like, "I thought she died." Like, bitch, ain't you dead? Uh, nah, because <laughs> when they first get Ellie, she's in the hallway with the other black chick, and I think they're both shot. Yeah, but um, and then she, but she tells Joel, "Hey, like I can't get her there. I need you to take her." Mm, to okay, gotcha. To go. Yeah, but they never really said that whether she died or not. Huh. No. Nah. That, 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 that literally fucked me up when I saw that. Gotcha. Yeah. I mean, I was surprised to see her. Yeah. And that she made it all the way to wherever this place was. You know what I'm saying? But Dude, first of all, they found the they found the perfect actress to play Ellie's mom. She looked just like her. She did. And I feel I feel like I've seen her before in another movie. No, I mean you might have seen her in another movie, but I'm pretty sure you've seen her in the TV show. The movie that's coming to my head is Napoleon Dynamite. Nah, nah, nah. nah. That's, the girl she, from, that's the girl from um whatever that movie is with the seal. No, 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 not her. The one that went to prom with Napoleon Dynamite. Yeah. Mm-mm. The one that went to prom with Napoleon Dynamite. No. Oh, oh, no, 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 no. No, wait, wait. Because the one I that they, they made, the one that they made go. The one that, that they made go with them, yeah. No, no, that's Hillary Duff's sister. No, that ain't. Mm-mm. No, not, not Hillary Duff was the one that made the go. It was, no, it no, was no, her no, friend. No, no, no. Hillary, Hillary Duff's sister is the one. Hey, you know, you're right. You're right. It is the friend. Because she, I don't know. She, I, that's no, what but, came to my mind. No, but that wasn't her. You, sh- you, you sh- she was in the first Avengers. You remember that? The very first Avengers. Yep. She was the waitress that they interviewed at the end of the movie. Where she's oh. talking about singing. But that's okay, bro. That's that's the little sister from Growing Pains. Holy shit! Okay. Yeah, I saw her. I was like, I know that face. Yeah, I know this face. Hmm. But like when I looked at her face and Ellie's, I was like, dude, that's actually. She- Pretty fucking spot on. Yeah, I, I, I was looking at it, I was like, I, I actually, actually thought for a minute they might do some CGI stuff just to like 
have Ellie play a different person, a different version of herself or whatever. Yeah. But then I was like, okay, cool. It's a different actress. Yeah. So, I mean, like, in that instance, you know, you, they they established that it was like Marlene was her, was Ellie's mom's best friend. So in episode one, I thought they came across Ellie at some point. Not in episode one. I think it was like episode two. Well, no, you know, in episode one, when like, uh, when you know, when she Marlene hands Ellie off to fucking uh, Joel, mm-hmm. but like, I thought, I thought the Fireflies came across Ellie. I thought Marlene didn't know who she was. Is what I'm saying. <sighs> unless, unless she no. doesn't realize it's her. No, I don't know. If, I don't think the Fireflies come across Ellie. I think they're trying to get her. And Ellie's chained to that radiator in the in the room. And I think Fedra's the one that keeps testing her. Oh, okay. So they went and they broke her out. Yeah. Oh, okay. I, I, think, okay. I think that's what it was. Oh, okay. That makes more sense. For some yeah. reason, I thought they didn't know who she was in the beginning of the episode. Then I saw this. I was like, man, this bitch knew her mom. Yeah, which is which is wild. Like that that whole that whole scene right there. Like, did you watch the after the after effect with them, the interviews and everything? A little bit of it, yeah. Okay, yeah, because they got to the point where they talked about how she had to go and kill her, kill her friend, yeah, that she grew that she grew up with, yeah, and even you, that's what do you like, do in that situation? Shit, man, uh, shit. I don't, like I, I mean, you do like it. I said, like I said, it. if if it's if that's your best friend, mm-hmm. and you know, hey, like, I just got some shit. Oh, it's it's, it's hard, it's hard because you got Is bit that- by a rattlesnake. And if I thought you was dying, I'd be like, "Let me get this scope, just <laughs> oh, motherfucker down." Well, that's different. That, that's it. That, that, no, no, but that, but that's but around, but that's got a cure. So you know, yeah, that, that's, that's what I'm saying. saying. That's different. That's that was like a virus. That was venom. You know, what I'm saying shit. But I, but but, I, um, I swear to God, bro. I swear to God, that opportunity comes, <laughs> carry it up your butt. I mean, like, all right, you going out? <laughs> oh God. Oh man. <laughs> A, a, no. ca- a carrot? What the fuck? Okay. <laughs> I, I don't even know what the fuck your mind is at right now. It's not but, me. Oh. It's the Jack talking. Oh, that's that's what it is. I told you, you gonna be able to do some freaky shit later. Tell me. <laughs> but I mean, I if if yeah, if I'm in that situation and like my best friend, like if I know, okay, my best friend just matter know. of fact, would you kill me if if I got if I got bit by a um basically this virus thing, whatever, and you know, it's supposed to be game over for me. If if I know for a fact it's game over, no matter what, mm-hmm. and you looking at me like yo fucking shoot me like it's yeah. fucking, I'm done I can't do no more. Yeah. Mm, I don't know. I'm, I'm gonna tell you I'm gonna be 100 honest with you. I would do it, but I wouldn't look at you. I'd have to turn away. I'd, I'd have to look to the. I'd have to look away before I pull the trigger. I wouldn't. I wouldn't want that last image to be stuck in my brain. Well, I, I understand that. Can I be honest with you? Yeah. I would do it, but, but. I might, I might chain you to like a tree or something first, so you don't move. You know, bring me like, slavery days. No. <laughs> <laughs> you racist son of a bitch. <laughs> no, I might. Oh chain God. You just so I can be like, all right, so like, because I'm, I'm gonna do it right. I'm like, well, how would Chris really want to go out? Because a gunshot, you know, but I'm gonna get a sledgehammer, a battle axe. Now that's what know. I do to other people. Make it quick for me, shit. I don't want to no, feel I'm on saying, this shit. Like, you know, imagine like if you had your, if you had your your way of like, okay, if I'm gonna go out, I'm gonna go out in the coolest way possible. Like, I don't know. Mm. I don't know. No, that's the coolest way possible. Coolest way possible is quick as fuck. Mm. But no, nah, that nah, it's like getting hit by a train or something. No, right, nah. You know, you no. know, what, you know what the way to do it is, is chain you up, right? Okay. Go, go find a bunch of like you know uh, what is it called uh, melatonin some shit. Give you a bunch of melatonin so you fall asleep, mm-hmm. and then put you down while you're asleep so you don't even feel it. So take it. So take it like um like episode three where they put on tranquilizers in the wine and drink it. Yeah. Well, no, but, I mean, no, but they they tranquilized and then they didn't like you know the poison infected. But I'm saying like you know just at least let you go to bed or let you go you know maybe give you a last meal you know a little in and out. Some 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 Popeyes, some Popeyes, some, some, some good chicken. Yeah. Nah, nah. I need, then, I, need a, you know. I need a grinder. You know yeah. Oh yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. They are in Boston. They should be able to get the I, I, I know, right? Shit. But no, I don't. Yeah, I, I would do it if, you, if that's what you want. Then you know that's that's the only way. Like I'm, 
obviously I'm gonna try to like make but, you suffer. But what doesn't even work? Because think about it, if I got this virus growing in me, that's gonna keep me alive. Technically speaking, putting me to sleep might not work, even if you do drug me up. No, but why? What? So you are saying that the virus is gonna keep you awake? Keep me alive? I'm not. No, I mean, if you, I'm just saying, put you to sleep before I. Oh, you know, got gotcha. you. Shoot you. That's yeah. all. I just don't want you to have to look at me with my double my double barrel. What, the Elmer Fudd gun? Yeah, you're like, hey, why you got that gun? I'm like, hey, I'm just, I'm just trying to make it look cool. Like, like, do, it do it for the gram. Do it for the gram. Yeah, this see, this, see, you think, <laughs> I know what kind of friend I got. Shit, this dude wants to make it look cool. Yeah, no, I'm talking about I don't want to look. I'm talking about I don't want the, your last image in my head like that. You're like, yo, I need it for the pictures. You know what I'm saying? Uh, it's for Chris, <laughs> listen, if, if Chris is gonna go, he's gonna go away in the coolest way possible. Oh, That's man. how Chris Brown goes. I, I make sure I put a bowl of ramen on your lap when I get done. Like, oh, here you go. Yeah. Yeah, just I mean the most racist looking thing, like a kimono, <laughs> some robin. Oh man! Nah, I, in all yeah. honesty, put me in a. Yeah, it, it'd be traumatic for the dogs, but put me in a pen with a bunch of dogs, so I can play with them for the last bit, and then be like, all right. Like, what's what's your what's your you know, if if you didn't if you had your choice of not necessarily a a, a last meal, but just mm-hmm. a last experience before you had to go, what would it be? Last experience, yeah. Other than sex, because I knew you, you and your dirty ass. Like, give me the dirtiest woman possible. I, I, I want the biggest orgy ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Um. Oh shit! Um. He he ran it. He got a he got a train run on him before he went to- <laughs> on, on me. Oh God. Like, how'd you get the Lord to be like, how'd you get here from fucking? <laughs> they all them beautiful women's down there that you blessed the earth with. Line them up, knock them down. Yeah. But um I, the last experience? Hmm. My last experience, I don't know. I right, oh, let's scratch it because I we're on a time crunch today. I got yeah. a question I want to ask you. So okay. in in the last moments of this episode. You know, again, Ellie asked Joel, like, you know, are you telling me the truth about the fireflies and everything that's going on? Mm -hmm. Do you, if you were Joel, do you lie to her? Yes. Why is that? To protect her innocence. You know, just, um, like, even though she's done some wild stuff and, you know, she's out there basically surviving with, with, with me the whole time, pretty much. If everything that we did for you find out, I'm not. I'm not gonna say necessarily it was a lie, but not what it was made out to be. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I think I lied to her. I, I think just, 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 to, just, to, just to keep her innocence, and then when she gets older, if it was ever come up again, yeah, maybe tell her the truth later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I think, I think I do the same because it's like, you know, I think maybe she's a little too emotional about the moment. Mm-hmm. To really comprehend the gravity of what was about to happen. Like, yeah. if you if you're gone, which is done, we have nothing left. And yeah. we don't know if it's gonna work. Because what, what, he told about the fireflies when she was in the car. Am I right? Uh, I think I she, she's laying. I, I, I'm trying to think. I want to remember what he said exactly. Um, because she's laying in the car, she wakes up, and she's trying to figure out what her clothes are and everything else. And he he what he what did he say? Did he, say, did he say Fedra came in or something like that, or they they came in, bombed the building, had to get her out of there. I think so. I think yeah, he completely fabricated this story. Yeah, but yeah, I think I think I, I think in that instance, I do the same because again, you're not you're not just protecting her innocence; you're mm-hmm. protecting the 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 very real idea that she might be the only cure out there. Mm-hmm. So you yeah. can only <clears throat> the only way you can sacrifice her is if you know. Yeah. Nobody knows. Yeah, I mean, but this is this has been uh, an, an interesting series. It was um on a scale of one to ten. What would you give it? Nine. Okay, I'd be a nine because um <clears throat> I don't know. It'd be a nine. It'd be almost a ten, but nine. I think I a tens are reserved for like for me like Sons of Anarchy and Breaking Bad, but that's up there. Breaking Bad. Would I give Breaking Bad a ten? I don't know. I think I'd give it a nine. Bruh. Breaking Bad was actually booty shaking. Dope. No, Breaking Bad was actually dope. But there was, there was too many episodes where it's like, yo, 
just get the wife out the, out the picture. She's fucking up everything. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> but that was her character. Yeah, I know, I know, but like, yeah, that, that, that's the only reason. Like, I'm, I was trying to think if there's any episodes in this season where I was like, it was. Not, I don't want to say it was kind of filler, but it was kind of like uh, I could have, you know, it was not like I don't know. No, I think every episode was good, but I still I was actually talking to a friend of mine about this uh, yesterday. I still feel like the third episode with the gay dudes was the best one out of all of them. I, th- Just, I think it was great. I think, think it was great, mm-hmm. but I, I think that episode with Ellie and 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 whatever the girl's name is, um, the one where her, they go to the mall, her best friend or whatever. Riley, yeah, Riley. Yeah, 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 yeah. I think I think that episode might battle it mm. because it was it was both. There were both instances of, you know, how do you spend your last moments with someone you love? Mm. You know. Mm. And I don't know. Yeah, yeah. But they were both really, really fucking good. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That's, uh, I mean, with that, that is the first block of the Sarat and Chris's Movie Therapy Podcast, Side B. Yes, indeed. We won't be back next week with another episode. Why? Because this is, it's it, the Side B is special. We don't, they're not, they're not all the time. They just, when we find something that we really want to cover, Mm-hmm. This is what this is about. And remember, it's not just television. It's music, uh, books, um, yeah, whatever other things we just decide to cover that isn't movies is going to be what side B is. We also we also have another another chapter in this album mm-hmm. that will be coming to you in place of side B when we're not doing this, and that is the interludes. Mm. And the interludes, I'm actually looking very forward to because, mm. you know, that's going to be the biggest departure from what we do, you know? Yeah, that's what we um, have features. Or not necessarily features, but um, do you want do you want to say what it is or wait? Well, wait essentially, essentially what we're going to be doing is we're going to be interviewing people who we find interesting. And it doesn't really matter, you know, notoriety don't mean shit. It's just yeah. if we find them interesting, mm-hmm. we just want to have a conversation and just talk to these people and just... You know, just learn about them, learn about their process and whatever they do. Yeah. Yeah. And it's uh it's basically going to be a a a depart just a yeah, a big like a skit or something. If you're looking in the realm of an album, mm-hmm. it's a little divergence from our normal streaming stuff. Mm. So yeah. I'm excited about that too, because I got a couple of people lined up. I know you got a couple people that you want to get lined up. Yeah. And we're gonna make this happen, but yeah. Yeah, my life is not about tr- trucking and sewing. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, sometimes, sometimes it'll talking to someone who you might not normally have a long conversation with, mm-hmm. you know, breeds knowledge and 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 and, and just just stuff you can take in and you know, help grow you as a person. Who's if you if you could talk to any kind of one 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 type of person, any kind, mm-hmm. doesn't matter who, where, where, what, where, 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 when, when, why. Actually, I I know who I'd love to talk to. Ooh. There's two people I'd love to talk to. Joe Biden? No. <laughs> hell no. <laughs> um shit. No, hell no. It would either be Mike Tyson or Dennis Rodman. Why? Specifically, why? Um Dennis because he's my favorite basketball player. Like he was just so crazy. Yeah. But but you couldn't deny his talent. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And Mike, because he was just Mike, you know what I'm saying? Like he's he went from this raging animal to what he is now. And just like to have a one on one with him, just to um you know, to yeah. see where his see where his mind is at, see where his brain is at. Just a just, just good conversation, just talk to him. You, you know? know, yeah, and this is gonna be very it's not stereotypical, but this mm-hmm. is I actually thought that you would want to talk to someone who's in the distillery business. Really? Yeah. Um just because I feel like I feel like I feel like you'd find a lot of interest in the the there's the in and outs of this, the distillery business. Not necessarily yeah. that you want to be one, but for mm-hmm. some reason I find I feel like you'd be like very like interested in the nuances of it. Well, when I went to the Jack Daniels distillery, I mean, don't get me wrong, I definitely found it amazing and interesting. You know what I'm saying? But um. It was cool to watch and everything, but as far as like having a, a, a sit down talk with somebody, 
and just talk about life, you know, vibe, whatever. Yeah, I I think I think number one probably Dennis Rodman, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And then Mike Tyson. Yeah. And, uh, no, just because the, re- the, the work no, ethic. The reason why I brought up the distillery thing is because I had a conversation a few weeks ago with someone. Mm-hmm. And I got into the, it, I just started talking about the processes of making ice cream. Okay. And I didn't, and, and, and all the memories started coming back to me and I just did, I forgot how intricate and how nuanced and how like, you know, involved that whole process is like, yeah. you know, you're trying to explain to someone the difference between gelato and ice cream and what air content can do to something is like, you know, a lot of people might not know that. Yeah. I mean that that was what we did for a while. Mm-hmm. I mean, and even that was a passion. Like once you find out how, how how it all works, and I remember when you was telling me before I had you know transitioned my life to doing different things. Yeah. And y'all put y'all you were showing me all the big tanks where it comes from, what goes on. And I was like, oh shit, there's there's a whole lot more than this than up there. <laughs> you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah. So it's like you know if you're looking for like a you know if you're looking for a healthy ice cream, you know. The, the it's not just the ingredients it's air content it's mm-hmm. you know the process of uh, you know sending it through you know the pasteurizers things like that like people just stuff that people don't know about and they're not supposed to know about but then when mm-hmm. you start to learn about it you realize like hmm, this is actually pretty fucking interesting and i can't wait yeah. to talk to people like that mm-hmm. anyways again whew, here's the 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 end note on the first block of Surat and Chris's movie therapy podcast side. Mm-hmm. So that be it's your boy Surat, aka Makazi. And like I said, I was going to finish this jack before the end of the episode. And... You do a whole lot better. <laughs> I can't even pay myself. Take yeah, my, yeah. I'm already yeah, gagging. Hey, yeah, you, better drink gag, you better let I'm that drink gagging it. go down. Yeah, here we go. Ah, I did. Here you go. It's your boy, now, it's your boy Sarah, aka Makazi. I, I gotta end it. <laughs> and your boy Chris Brown, aka Red Boy Delta. And I will do slightly a little bit more Jack with you just to <laughs> you feeling it now. I'm not feeling it. It just it's better with ice. My, my body's like, yo, get that shit out of me. All right. And catch us in a couple of weeks when we come back with something new. Yes, indeed. Also, go go check out. Our normal podcast, Surround Chris's Movie Therapy Podcast. Check out all the different movies we're checking out on there. We've been doing a lot more recent ones lately, but you know we'll be going back in and delving into the the hidden gems. Pretty indeed, soon. yeah. And don't hold what we say against us. <laughs> like 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 the introduction says, we're two dumb dudes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. We're two dumb, we're two dumb dudes who don't know what the fuck they're talking about. For real, all right. Kinda. Cheers. Yes, indeed. <laughs>